Good day everyone, so in yesterday's video we talked about how the Fontaine characters have effectively power crept the Inazuma characters and in today's video I want to take this idea further by looking at Fontaine as a region in the overworld compared to Inazuma as a region and hopefully you'll notice how Fontaine has effectively exploration crept Inazuma. Now why is this relevant? Well one of the things that is currently happening in Genshin Impact is that the focus from the developers, certainly if you look at all the patch notes and so on, is to attract more and more new players into the game. And the entire idea here is to give them a fun experience just so that they can keep on playing for long enough such that they might hopefully buy one or two things in the shop. That is literally the Genshin Impact formula. It's not about in-game, it's not about long-term players. So hopefully you can take a bit of a wear a bit of a different hat for today's video and look at this discussion from the perspective of a new player. So to kickstart this conversation let's look at some of the differences between Fontaine and Inazuma. To get to Fontaine you only need to complete the Mondstadt Archon quest and a teleporter will be unlocked and you are told on the map very very clearly that this teleporter has been unlocked. It's something that new players will really not be able to miss. Whereas to get to Inazuma, it's really not clear. You need to complete the Liwe Archon quest and you need to reach a certain minimum adventure rank. Which just begs the question, why not put a teleporter in Inazuma after the Monstad Archon quest? Well, you don't really want new players to go to Inazuma because it's going to be frustrating for them to play. You see, when I go as a new player to Fontaine and I start swimming around in this vast, like, waterlogged region, what I find is that I don't need to worry about my characters not being able to beat up the enemies underwater because the combat system has been effectively reworked where all of your character stats and levels and artifacts and progress don't matter. The only thing that matters is your world level. So even a newbie that goes into Fontaine can effectively clear about more than half the region underwater just using the tools at their disposal. Nothing of the gacha of the progress matters. Whereas if you go to Inazuma, well, you need to have stronger units because suddenly there aren't yes. mobs of hillichills that are going to give your shungling lots of energy to use power. Tornado. Nope, you've got two Kairagi, they're not going to give you as much energy, they're going to auto lock onto your character and make it really annoying, and you might think this is a bit of a joke as a veteran player, but trust me, when Inazuma came out, the first things the devs did was really nerf and tune down, and tone down the Kairagi significantly, because a lot of players had problems. They even had problems with the Raiden boss, which was reworked to be like a lot easier for the lower adventure ranks as well. It's very very obvious that if you go and you look at how new friendly Fontaine is versus Inazuma, the differences are very very clear. So when you have this big adventure like world and land that a new player can explore in Fontaine that gives them lots of primo gems and chest, why would you ever send them early on into Inazuma where the, where the exploration is going to be a lot more frustrating, especially due to the fact that you've got clumsy boat mechanics that you need to use to traverse the waters in Inazuma and of course the waters themselves act as a natural barrier where you might not have a Mona or an Ayaka because you're a new player and it's just very, very difficult. But in Fontaine, if you just have the free Traveler or Lynette, you can dolphin dive, you can disable any enemies, you can solve puzzles a lot more easier. People really underestimate how the Archie system actually makes it far more new friendly to play in Inazuma than what they actually think. You see, for you and me, climbing up a tree to quickly get a new Morosia block to solve a treasure is nothing. It's easy. But for new players that are playing on mobile that don't have any previous gaming experience, it's quite difficult. So having characters that can help auto-solve puzzles makes a big difference. People don't seem to understand really how much of a quality of life difference for new players the new and Osea mechanic have like introduced. Never minding the fact that you can take these big enemies and you can disable them with new and Osea and very conveniently if you get the Fontaine characters, they'll do it automatically for you even in the abyss. 
this. This is something that a lot of people kind of dismiss because, well, I've already been playing for three years, so why does this matter? It really does matter. You need to think of why the devs would go out of their way to introduce these mechanics. And if you now start seeing the perspective of a new player playing uh, since 4.0, it makes a lot of sense that when they get to Fontaine and to Leeway and they start playing through the regions and they solve the puzzles, they'll eventually get better and their units will get stronger so that by the time they eventually unlock Inazuma, their time in Inazuma is going to be a lot better than the poor players that started way back when in 2.0 that had to rush through the story just to not miss out on the hype and then they get to Inazuma and it's way too difficult for them. You really have to understand how a lot of the pain points in Inazuma have been optimized. Even something as simple as hunting down crystal flies in, in Fontaine is very easy. A lot of domains have them underwater right next to them. So as you farm for talent books and all these things, the crystal flies happen to be there. They don't fly away as easily. You can easily catch up to them. Whereas in the other regions, they're a lot more difficult to get, especially once again, if you're a mobile player. So a quali these quality of life differences just keep on adding up and we can take this a lot further. When you go to Inazuma, what you have is a Thunder Sakura or a bunch of these Thunder Sakura trees that effectively auto target your character. This is a big problem because once you're electrocuted, you lose a bit of poise and it interrupts you from doing actions and then you have all the Kairagi auto target your character. Not a fun experience. Even if you had a character like Ayaka, suddenly the Sisson Mage and all of these other characters keep on teleporting. The Maiden like teleports away, so you use your big elemental burst that you eventually like built up because there's not a lot of energy particles to get or to pick up, and then you completely miss because the Mage has transport teleported away. You don't see any of this weird combat design in Fontaine. In fact, the enemies are significantly more straightforward. But they're also a bit more varied, like the one allows you to jump up and down. So the experience in fighting the enemies and the ways in which you can engage with them is a bit more richer than what you have in Inazuma, which is just here is a big open area, here's a boss enemy, and if that boss enemy happens to be a pyro or a hydro cube or a thunderbird, it flies away, it's annoying, it can heal itself. It's not that easy basically for new players to fight these enemies, and that just makes the experience less fun because you are struggling and you don't want newer players to struggle too much. You don't want your games to be too skill based. In any case, the other thing about Inazuma is that it is full of hazards. There is like the toxic water on the one island, the constant rain and thunder that keeps on inhibiting your progress. There is the entire um, like furnace area that you can't reach into and once you eventually do unlock it, it constantly drains your health. These are just things that make it much more unfun. There are also some other regions like in the sea with like toxic water. And if you're a new player, instead of really looking and seeing this as an extension or an upgrade to testing you and your abilities on your journey, it's just a bit more off-putting. In contrast, when you go to Fontaine, the exploration and everything is a lot easier and even the more difficult parts are hidden away behind world quests and so on. So by the time you do eventually get to Inazuma as a new player, hopefully you have already racked up enough experience, you would have gone through the gentle learning curve in Mondstadt and in Leeway and eventually picking up some of the more gentler like exploration puzzles in Fontaine such that you can be prepared when you go and you go into Inazuma. So from that perspective, there are so many quality of life improvements, but none of these, if you really think about it, benefit the older players. Instead of having a far more hazardous region, a region that constantly challenges you, the local legends literally popping up out of a bush and ambushing your party, we don't get any of these things as older players. We don't get random rush um, like mobs on the map that are level 100 that you need to clear as raids as part of the end game. None of this really matters. The only thing that matters is optimizing these regions for new players. And it's going to be very interesting from my perspective, at least, to see what they're going to do with Natlan because Natlan is supposed to be the hostile and difficult region. 
but perhaps they might put it so far out of the way that by the time new players get to it, it's going to be easy to navigate. I'm not sure what they're going to do, but I can promise you it's not going to be as hostile as in Azuma. It's going to be a dumbed down region because, well, they need to sell you the new product. They need to entice all the players and new players to keep on playing the game. So they're going to have some sort of magical formula that's going to work its way in there. Let me know what you guys think. For me, it's very, very clear that the game is has changed quite a bit. I think it's sad that the Inazuma characters in particular are neglected quite heavily. I can see some neglect also on the Sumeru characters, but it's also clear that the way the game is developing is to be more new friendly and it's not for us as all the players. And the region design is just another point to back that up. All right, let me know what you think and have a good day. Cheers.